Hello, this is Dr. Gandhi. Today's question asks if I can analyze Trump's claims that the election was stolen, including his Facebook video that was released in early December 2020. Another question here is, what is the difference between denial and delusions? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. Since losing the election in early November 2020 to Joe Biden, Donald Trump and some of his associates have been making claims of election fraud. Even though the evidence doesn't support his claims, Trump repeated his argument in a 46-minute Facebook video. Here's a summary of that video. Trump suggested that the election took too long. It wasn't contained to just election day. He said that Biden was told not to campaign, as if Biden knew the outcome of the election in advance. Trump said that historically, the Democrat political machine cheats. This time, they used the pandemic as a pretext to use mail-in ballots. These mail-in ballots allowed dead people and non-citizens to vote. Trump then went on to make allegations about specific swing states like Wisconsin, Michigan, and Georgia, citing various reasons why he actually won in those states, even though he actually lost. Trump said that it was statistically impossible that he lost, claiming that the real pollsters, as opposed to, I guess, these fake pollsters, said he led the party to victory, therefore he could not lose. This reminds me of a situation where students would be working on a group project that was graded independently. If all of the students received a passing grade and one received a failing grade, the one who failed would feel left out, even if they failed because of their behavior. Trump revisited the issue of dead people voting, specifically stating that some had been dead for 25 years. I'm not sure why this was more offensive to him than someone who was dead for five or 10 years. Trump went on to talk about the 2016 election and how the Democrats investigated him for collusion with Russia, and there was none. He said that he was the cleanest person in history, and he talked about various witnesses coming forward to support his claims. I imagine, among others, he was referring to Melissa Carone, who became an overnight sensation with her curious narrative in the Michigan House of Representatives. Some have said that it could be adapted for a Saturday Night Live skit, although I don't think it needs to be adapted at all. They can just replay the footage, and nobody would know the difference. In that way, Melissa was courteous. She will save them production costs. At the end of his video, Trump said that his campaign for voter integrity will be his greatest achievement. I think this is really unbridled optimism. He is so great that losing only makes him greater. Now moving on to the question about denial and delusions. Let's look at all the possibilities here with Trump's allegations. In theory, Trump could be correct. I don't think he is, but I want to include every possibility here. He could believe that what he was saying is not true, so he's lying, or he could believe it is true, which leads us to either denial or delusional thinking. Let's start by reviewing these concepts. Denial is when somebody cannot accept the truth. We often see it with people who consume excessive quantities of substances like alcohol. They say something like, I can stop any time. Drinking is good for me. Drinking makes me stronger and more productive. Drinking will lead to health benefits. There are several theories of denial which lead to a few types. I'm going to focus on two here, moral defect and defense mechanism. Under the moral defect theory, people who are in denial are simply lying. In essence, under this theory, there is no such thing as denial. There is only intentional deception. Under the defense mechanism theory, denial gives somebody an opportunity to integrate negative information about themselves. It's actually considered healthy in the short run because it can help people to bring that information in a way that's not threatening to them. But it can be maladaptive if somebody maintains it for too long. So like many behaviors, if they're repeated too much, they can become pathological. This conceptualization is consistent with our understanding of narcissism. Some have suggested that Trump may be a bit narcissistic. People who are narcissistic have a fragile ego, and narcissism protects their ego from information it simply can't handle. 
Now moving on to delusions. A delusion is a fixed false belief indicative of an abnormality in the affected person's content of thought. Delusions are strongly associated with mental disorders, for example, schizophrenia, major mood disorders, and brief psychotic disorder. A delusional person will firmly hold the belief even though there is sufficient evidence to the contrary. A delusion is different than an overvalued idea. When somebody has an overvalued idea, there's at least some level of doubt. A person with a delusion cannot be convinced the delusion is incorrect. They are absolutely convinced the delusion is real. Therefore, a delusion is not amenable to logic. Often, delusions have a bizarreness or absurdity to them that is obvious to other people. So right away, when people hear about a delusion, they know it is likely a delusion. It can be difficult to distinguish denial from delusional thinking. Some theorists believe that denial is really just a low-grade delusion. Here's how I conceptualize these ideas, how I tell them apart. Denial is usually focused on an area that is highly relevant to the person's life. It is specific, not usually bizarre, and not necessarily accompanied by a number of other denials, like the person is pretty much just denying one thing. Denial is typically time-limited. People in denial usually come out of it when they're able to integrate the consequences of reality. On the other hand, delusions are easy to spot. They tend to come in groups. They don't go away based on external circumstances and don't necessarily function in a way that helps the person. Typically, if a person's delusion actually was true, it would be very bad for them. Delusions often have a persecutory and paranoid component, like someone believing that others are out to get them. If a person has one delusion, they are more susceptible to other delusional beliefs. Consider alien lizard people versus alien chicken people. If someone believes in the alien lizard person conspiracy theory, they are more likely to believe that there are alien chicken people, even though the two groups are mortal enemies. Now, of course, there is no alien chicken people conspiracy theory because alien chickens are really good about keeping secrets. They don't have loose lips. As a matter of fact, they don't have lips at all. That makes it even easier. So how might this information about denial and delusions apply in a case like what we see happening with Donald Trump? Assuming Donald Trump is incorrect and not being intentionally deceptive, his behavior seems to align better with denial than something like delusions. There does appear to be a persecutory component to his beliefs, but the rest of the evidence points toward denial. Denying the results of the election is clearly favorable to him, or at least he believes it is. The belief is not bizarre. For example, Trump isn't saying that the ballots were stolen by time travelers. Trump doesn't seem to be buying into multiple delusions. I think it's reasonable to believe that if Trump somehow won enough of these lawsuits in the swing states to be declared the winner, he would give up talking about election fraud. He only cares about it because he believes it affects him. If this was a delusion, he would keep talking about it long after a favorable or unfavorable resolution, and it's likely he would have been talking about it long before he was ever involved in politics. If Trump is in denial, this could be explained in part by what appears to be an elevated level of narcissism. I think the scenario with Trump further illustrates the dangers of narcissism and how underestimating its ability to cause maladaptive behavior is not wise. Those are my thoughts on the Donald Trump election fraud allegations. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.